to win the game. Yeah, the opening game, I definitely think Secret, I think, had a had a kind of a harder to execute draft, but this time around it just feels like it's very overly reliant on the PA of RTZ, but we'll see what he can get done. Team Secret in the winning bracket finals after taking down Alliance in our opening match. They're on the Radiant side, they're going to be running Kuroki on the support Vengeful Spirit, and RTZ going to be on the Phantom Assassin. S4, the son of Magnus, on Magnus himself. And it's going to be Puppy playing the Chen, the captain and drafter for the Team Secret, and Zai on the offlane Batrider. Taking on the Swedish squad, it is going to be the Ninjas in Pajamas on the Dire side. Hanskin going to be playing here Earthshaker. Limp on the mid laner. Jonas going to be on the Phoenix in the offlane. Seal Kit on the Skyrath Mage. And that leaves Era playing the Troll Warlord. We already see a ward placed out from Zai. I think he's he's expecting to be met with a lot of resistance from the NIP tri-lane, which he should be. I mean, it's a Sky Wrath troll and a Earthshaker. I mean, troll alone is troll is alone is pretty difficult to deal with. Sky is pretty difficult to deal with, but all three of them combined is most likely going to lead to a uh, dead bat rider. So placing the ward there probably because he expects to run to the jungle pretty darn soon. But at the same time, Chen is going to be there. And I'm actually surprised NIP didn't take over the jungle a little bit earlier. They have Earthshaker, I'd say, is pretty good for uh, level 1. Phoenix is, like, mediocre, but trying to deny Chen those early creeps and try and make it very limited to what the Radiant can work with in their jungle, where they have a Batrider and a Chen, I think is key in shutting down their mid game. And the longer you draw this game out, the better it is for NIP. Yeah, it's very different with what do you see most teams do against the Chen. So I guess Kuro does have sentry wards to start things off, but just the pull camp, which has a ward on top of it. So we'll see how things will unravel here. NIP, it looks like they may ge be gearing up to fight this bottom rune, but Secret with two heroes down here and to see if they look to fight this one. Already Arteezy backing off and it looks like NIP may be able to snag both bounty runes here with Limp poised to take the bottom one and the top one likely to go the way of error on the Troll Warlord. Small edge to start things off but it's an edge nonetheless for the ninjas in pajamas. And Kuro currently struggling to get that sentry D ward off here at the pool camp. Hmm. Unusual ward right inside the middle. It's the, if you put sentries like on the right and the left, it may, I guess, miss, be missed by both. We'll see if that works out, but. The first sentry crew are gonna kinda get greedy and looking to cover the tree area over here on the side of the lane, as well as some of those possible ward spots. So he's gonna check it, gonna see that it's blocked, let's now see where he places the next one. I mean, typically you place it, what, right here or right here, I would say? There's a lot, yeah, exactly. The sentry, the observer ward block could be like, it's pretty big, this box here. I mean, it goes even further down, like, down towards the bottom here. And Kuro, where is he going to plant it? There we go. Okay, so he gets it there. If the ward was further down to the south, he would not have been able to get that D ward off. Yeah, so it's that was like a 50-50. Mm -hmm. I mean, he even got it before the spawn. That was a nice play as well. Oh, that's really important for them. They need to be able to work with the jungle as much as possible, and having that pool camp blocked is really bad for their two supports. Yeah, because yeah, Phoenix, with this lane pushes out, gets a lot of XP, and Phoenix just with XP can slow down a lot of the PA's farm and cause a lot of problems with the Fire Spirit's harass. But for now, he's getting zoned out. Meanwhile, Puppy is jungling it up. Shaker setting up for a kill in middle. Hmm. Can you find much off well, of this? There's a ward there. I'd be yeah. highly surprised if S4 died to that. We're seeing the contrast between what Puppy does on his Chen now and the art style Chen, where Puppy is going pure farm mode. He start, he's farmed up a double stack, and now he's sent it over to farm up a medium stack already with the same tornado. Doesn't clear out the entire camp, but gets it very low. And now he's going to stack again. Puppy plays this soup. He plays like kind of how AUI used to play on his Chen, it feels like. We'll scout out the bottom two minute rune. Will be a bounty rune. Mm -hmm. Jonas gets it. Tried to leave it for Kuro, but that's not going to work. But now he's got no dive, and Kuro has a stun in a couple of seconds. Going to get one or two more right clicks, trying to body block with the Wild Wing. No, but he's just going for the damage. And Phoenix, with that low base armor, oh, oh. survives with the Tango regen. 20 HP with Did the stick. Did he cancel the attack on the Wild Wing? I don't think. I think he got it off. I think it was like a long range attack. Mm. Could be wrong. It was close. So now the Wild Wing going to make its way down towards this big camp, and Puppy just going to continue to farm away. He's got a double stack uh, times two. Mid lane S4 needs to be careful. This Earthshaker on the high ground has a fissure ready to go, but Bottle will arrive and will heal S4 back up. 
If he gets really low, he can just get sent back by Chen. So, let's see. Puppy. Not going to stack up. First one top. Skyrath Mage. <laughs> that was just constant harassment and not gain bolt. Did yeah, not expect I mean, that to be a kill. It's a really tough, tough place to be in. Mm. But where does he retreat to at this point? I mean, is he going to stay up in the lane and probably die to the double slow again? At some point, he's going to go rotate and swing to the jungle, it feels like. But for now... There's no stacks there. They're all taken out yeah, by Puppy. Yeah, exactly. That's the problem. You've got a Chen on your team. But this is where Puppy's maybe looking to farm now because he realizes that the Batrider will want the jungle around five minutes into this game. So he also has no smokes. He has no smoke, no boots. This not is that many creeps. Just, just Puppy farming away. He's just keep going, keeps going for the wild wins, keeps going for the the jungle farm and stacks. And so far, making pretty good use out of the jungle as far as experience growth gains. It goes in. Oh, it's now swinging towards mid lane. Centaur in hand, limp. Spots it out with an observer ward, and doesn't look like this should succeed. But Zai. Maybe looking to come in from behind. Just level 1 though, and Puppy now could be in some trouble here. There's a Fissure to set up an LSA, and Puppy... Uh-oh, Hastrian on Limp. They don't even need the Fissure here. They're going to throw it to set up the LSA, and Puppy goes down. you will lose to Centaur as well. NIP. Not fresh off of a win against Cloud9. Start things off pretty decently here against Secret, although they do lose their Phoenix at the bot lane to the Phantom Assassin. Jonas has been playing pretty boldly. I mean, that dive without any of his co uh, and without his spirits up was pretty bold, and looks like he has taken one death to Arteezy. And Arteezy, he's getting decent CS, but not as good as the Troll, who ended up getting part of the first blood. And Silkid's still up here. We'll continue to zone out the Batrider, who does hit level 2. That's a big thing. He can't jungle until he's level 2, so... Not sure if I want to head straight there right now with Puppy kind of already residing over this Radiant Jungle, but I imagine he's not really too happy about this top lane. At some point, Troll can almost zone him out alone with Phase Boots already up. Once Era has that like Ring of Aquila, this lane gets kind of unmanageable for Zai. If anything, we're already there. They can stack Ancients, though. Useful for the PA with them power later, but Secret just looking to play a catch-up game at this point. Mm -hmm. He tried to go for a kill nest for at mid lane with the Fisher as well as a potential Lavina Blade. Didn't succeed, but here comes the counter kill. Handskin hit by the Skewer, slowed down. There's going to be Napalm. The Batrider gets blown up by the Lena, but here comes Puppy. One kill, looking for two. Can he get it with the Hellbear? Oh, gets hit by the LSA and Limp barely gets out of there. I thought that LSA was going to miss the Hellbear and it would be a kill. Another kill on Phoenix at bottom lane while all that action at mid was going on. So Arteezy up to a two kill streak at bottom on the PA. That would have been a big kill on Alina in the mid lane. Just so important to get that blink dagger before she gets her Yules. Well, Hanskin's rotations and assistance towards mid lane so far has not really amounted to too much. Hasn't been offered that much help for the Lina outside of that one Chen kill, but we're seeing Puppy now, level 5, looking to pressure the mid tier 1 tower and fairly successful so far. For NIP, it does feel like they can't be letting Arteezy get too much free farm and too many kills. Because that's the one hero which will solo carry this game. He's going to have Empower. He's going to have a team fight built around him with Magnus and Batrider. They need to make sure if they shut down anyone, it's the PA of Arteezy they want to shut down. Yeah, or you just get Troll and Lena equally farmed. Well, as far as those two go right now. Troll farming well. Oh, Lena finds a kill. S4 on the Magnus. This time around, the Fissure setup does work. And... It was a Laguna Blade being used as ES and Lena bring down Magnus. And you talked about getting the Troll and the Lena farm. Well, those two are your two top net worth heroes for now. So Lena having no problems at all in that bottom lane. Well, Phoenix working on his egg. Not quite there yet. You don't see the value point in Sunray yet from uh, Jonas. What build is Arteezy going to go for this game? We talked about how he can just skip out on Battle Fury. Since he has the Magnus on his team, uh, but he is going to have to carry hard. Yes. And he's also going to have to get a BKB at some point, but if he gets BKB first, it might hinder his farm too much. But if he doesn't get BKB first, he might just die and be irrelevant in the later game. So, uh, yeah, this is not an easy call for him, I would say. He also opted for the treads instead of the phase. Mm, top lane, Zai now getting silenced up. He did get the Firefly up with a Fissure. 
Era will get the kill as well as the T1 tower. This TP coming in from a PA and Era has to hightail it out of there, heading towards the river. Sees the PA cancel the TP and will be mm, maybe safe to just go back to lane. It looks like he's going to continue farming or at least head to the shop and pick up some of his next couple of items. Gets the Morbid Mask and will throw in some lifesteal to the mix as well now. Nice bit of play there coming in from your troll. Yeah, both of these games, uh, Seeker's offlaner has just been completely left out to dry. And Era is just going to be ridiculously fat as a result. Troll Skyrath is going to be, as far as lane duos go, it's going to be one of the most potent ones there is. Puppy goes down mid lane. They didn't even need the Laguna Blade for a really nice control from Limp to hold on to the ultimate. And I mean, they've been, they've been filtering from that same spot like over yeah. and over again. And this is where you ideally just want to throw an award there. And Chen oh, keeps the center alive but loses the rest of his creep army. So Hanskin didn't find too much the first five minutes, but suddenly he's gotten two, three kills in a row for his team. He's got two kills in the mid lane with the Magnus and the Chen got the kill at top lane, so... He's Urshaker rota rotation starting to amount to something, and he's now going to be rewarded by getting some XP and farm in this bottom lane, but not an easy lane for him to stay in against the stifling dagger spam coming out from the PA. Mm, the Treads HOD build, one of my personal favorites. Okay. I Means it's like Treads HOD and then you go BKB after that, or are you going damage? It depends on how the game progresses. If you can get Aegis, you don't need BKB. But it's I, I like it because it just gives him a lot of armor versus troll, and she does so much physical damage that the life steal is really nice. But I mean, it's it's not gonna be enough unless they stack up ancients. They get some huge RPs on Magnus, and but Magnus has not had an easy start. Yeah, this Magnus blink timing is not looking like it's gonna be too impressive here. This full now starts leveling up the empower. He's just got boots, wand, and a bottle. Going for the. Uh, a bit of extra stats even with the upgraded wand. Vengeful Spirit has also been extremely quiet. Let's see what Kuro's next move. He's got phase boots here, so he's even been given some farm it looks like, as he at least taking the pull camps and all that. Are they going to smoke? They, they're walking under a ward. Oh, do they realize that? The Ancient seems to be maybe what they have their eyes on here. They sentry to make sure it's not being scattered out. They take out a low ground observer ward. They can't really farm this just yet. Bottom lane, meanwhile, Arteezy's the target they want to go, and it looks like he got too aggressive, and Skyrath Mage going to get some kills on Arteezy. That's your PA. That's the one here you do want to be bringing down, and looks like he went on the Phoenix, who popped the supernova and managed to escape with his life as Secret. Going to the enemy jungle, they see Era here, and walks into a magic missile. Here comes your Batrider, no lasso available. Era looking to run out of the Firefly. He's pretty swift here, gets the phase boots up. Lina shows up with the Laguna Blade, gets, oh, gets the kill on the Batrider. LSA catches two as well, and they're going to save Era on the troll. Kuro in some trouble. It's a DD Lena. One more right click. Could have been enough, but didn't want to risk it. And now the Chen, Hand of God, comes into play. Fissure blocks in two. Uh-oh. Phoenix dives to the high ground, cancels the dive up there, but doesn't hit the Fire Spirits initially until he looks to chase down Puppy. Fissure available in three. The chase is still on. Handskin really wants to bring down this Chen. Fissure onto Kuro. Gets him down to 20 HP, but not enough. Didn't block him against the, the wall there, and it seems NIP. They're gonna still take what they can get as it's more kills going away at the Lena, and the troll somehow surviving that gank as well. Yeah, it was such an important gank to survive too. Because they had just killed PA, so they were looking for a kill in return. But now Era is just way more farm than Arteezy. Well. Still looking for that Blink Dagger on S4. The Magnuses today have not had that much luck in their Blink Dagger timing. I don't think any of them have been sub-10 and lucky to get it by 12. This is a hero S4 is well known for. He hasn't died too much. Just the singular death, but still been a very rough mid lane for him. Lena Singh on 6,000 net worth. Yule Scepter treads already complete. Limp. Starting to gather some momentum here. He goes diving. Well, Phoenix goes diving through this top lane, looking to get away from a gank and gets a kill on Zai on the way out. This poor bat rat, it burns to death. And Phoenix, look at his blink dagger timing. It Ooh. is. I mean, how are they going to make plays? Like their their strength is in this mid game. It's supposed to be right now. They were supposed to get their blinks three or four minutes ago. Start getting RP kills. Start getting lasso kills. Make NIP feel scared. Prevent them from doing roach. But nothing like that is happening. NIP walking to bed right now with the smoke. Oh, they just got their Magnus Blink timing. If there was ever a time to get Blink on your Magnus, it was as NIP go for Roshan. 
If he hits two in the RP and gets a skewer to follow, they need oh, to do that. Like, this is right here now. may scout this out as well. He's gonna get there in time. The wave is there. RP on both the skewer. Oh, gets cancelled by a figure, but it's gonna be a good fight regardless for Secret. Lena as well as Troll go down. That. That's so big. That. that oh was, my goodness. I don't know about luck, but NIP, I guess you've got to expect at some point that that blink is coming from your Magnus. They're gonna fly back on the Troll. They're looking to TP and contest this. They may be too late though. Roche was too low. Oh, Secret. In some. Well, maybe not in trouble here. Go Phoenix diving through. Doesn't throw the supernova off. And Kuro going to be brought down here by Era. It looks like Arteezy now trying to fight through with the Aegis. He's just looking to blink and get the hell out of there. Double buyback from NIP. Very costly stuff if they don't find some kills. And just Avenge kill does not feel like it's going to be enough. Arteezy still on the run. Caught out by the Yule Scepter. There's going to be an LSA waiting for him. And at least one kill on your PA. Possibly a second. They've got the silence ready with an Ancient Seal. They get the silence. Skewer missed as... Another heal comes in from your Chen. They're looking to bring down Arteezy here. Phoenix with the Fire Spirits. Blink forward from your Pier. Looking to fight his way out of this one onto Limp. But he's going to go down. But it's two heroes brought down by the Shockwave. Supernova comes now, but it's too late. Oh, boy. Secret. Wow, they Kill could not have asked for a better Roche fight. Yep. And a better sequence of events. Mm -hmm. Kuro catches that hand skin. They're not done just yet. They're going to get a fifth hit kill at this point. And Poppy, with the test of faith, brings down hand skin. My goodness. What happened yesterday? I think there was a team like 5,000, 6,000 gold ahead. They went for Roshan, and they got yep. killed right before doing it. And that was Empire against Hellraisers. Yeah, it's like the exact same situation. It, I mean, it's, it's something that you need to do. But when it's risky, and when there's heroes off the map, and you're not sure if they have blink, and you don't have good vision, you cannot afford those type of risks. You, you need a support sitting up there and maybe sacrifice their life for it, but you can't have those heroes die, buy back, don't get that many kills, and then die no. again. And then give up the Aegis to the PA that was struggling in the early game. And you get a Batrider kill, <laughs> the blink on this back gets slowed down even further. It was awfully close to it before that one death, and now bottom lane, Arteezy doesn't have the Aegis anymore. One or two right clicks, evade, 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 he's saying, and where's my RNG? That's not the RNG he's known for. Yeah, I mean, PA is just so weak against Lina, though. Especially a level 11 Lina. She's yeah. slightly overleveled, I would say, but it's still just not an easy game. No. All four of your main carries are and reaching that level 2 ulti point now. As NIP will look to get to work on some objectives. A terrible fight around the Roshan pit, but still... In a s well, they actually know they went into a disadvantageous position. Secret take the net worth lead despite Troll and Lena being your top two farmers. Yeah, but a lot of that's on the Chen. Chen is actually number three on net worth on the side of Secret. And they really need the bad rider who is, I guess, now position 5 to get his Blink Dagger. Wow, I didn't even realize. Okay. Zai just has not been on his game today. His clockwork was less than impressive, missing yep. a lot of hook shots. His Blink Dagger is just ridiculously late. I mean, you could kind of see it coming from the draft uh, with Chen occupying most of the jungle and then the other lane struggling. They're not going to have enough control for Batrider to get his Blink Dagger, but at the same time, like even struggling Batriders usually find it by 13, I would say. Yep. All from here, NIP. Not going to be happy about that Roche fight, but they're still in a pretty decent position here. Arteezy will be looking to get some catch-up farm in the form of a big Ancient stack. The Empower just level 2, but that should be more than enough with the Helm of the Dominator to heal him back up. Getting some good farm here on your PA. Yeah, and then I we'll think see BKB, though. It really feels like. Against the Fire Spirits of the Phoenix, I mean, the, the stuns of the ES Lena. Well, it's not an answer to the Ags Laguna Blade. If you get thrown up in the air by a Yules, you need to be out of BKB so you don't get hit by the full combo. Yeah, you also need to just be able to kill the Earthshaker. Like, if you don't kill the Earthshaker, he's just going to stun lock you. And yeah, he's probably going to die too, but he's going to kill your PA in most of these fights. So she just needs it to be able to kill people and, and as well as just keep surviving and keep accruing items. She cannot afford to die in most of these upcoming skirmishes. Looks like they're gathering in position for a smoke. Oh, awesome. Batrider does have his Blink Dagger, but okay. there is no smoke. Coming out on Kuria, maybe? There we go. Venge has a smoke now. Kuro. Gonna leave it's a little late. Out. I think they missed their timing. Yeah, it does feel like they do have a ward in their own jungle down bottom, so... 
I think we had an idea that Hanskin was down here. Yeah, I mean, look at the heroes. They're already back at their T3 tower just because they expected a smoke 10 seconds ago, and now that it's come, like, 10 seconds late, Yeah, I mean, they're more than prepared. They're just sitting around missing off the map for so long. They are going to firefly their way over towards this secret shop, but at this point, even if Bat finds right, someone, he's he, he not really killing them on his own, and there we go. He gets a blink lasso up. I don't think he's pulling Hanskin far enough away. Fissure comes out, and Zai maybe in some trouble. A Mystic Flare, Lina, LSA, Dragon Slave, kills off your Bat. He needed a four staff for that play, and Zai is just too underfarmed at this point. He can't be going for plays like that. And Earthshaker doesn't have a blink, and he might not have some for that for some bit of time. But if they keep feeding him kills like that, Era heading around the bottom room trying to control. Kuro gets a stun off before he can slow. Is he going to get a bash? <laughs> okay, first hit. <laughs> All skill, says Era. Limp comes in for the KS yeah. and misses. Come on, Limp, man. That, that, that error got the bash. He deserves that one. And now Limp almost has a Shadow Blade, which yeah. is very problematic for these Blink initiators who don't have BKB. I mean, Batrider, is he going to get BKB after Blink Dagger? Highly unlikely. They usually go for four staves and then into the Blink Dagger, or sorry, into the BKB. And then Magnus, he's working on his BKB too. But pretty much if she finds anyone else aside from the Magnus, they're dead. Well, the great thing about the Shadow Blade is you can still gank heroes with BKB because you Shadow Blade stun, and you can stun them before they pop the BKB, so... It ends up being a, a way of actually dealing with BKB heroes to some extent. Zai for now, still looking to find that full staff up at the top lane. Secret. Not looking as hot as they did in their first game against Alliance, where they were just dominant, and the ninjas in pajamas... Just making a good showing here today at the Red Bull Battlegrounds Europe The group. team that we thought... You know, the least likely. It's just it's another Hellraiser story. You just you just can't count anyone out in these group stages. They're all very close in skill. Yeah, for that's sure. the thing. When you you're talking about NIP being the weakest team in the group, that's a pretty damn strong weakest team that the group has. They're probably saying that if we were in any other group, we'd be like if they they if they're in like an SEA or an America group, NIP are probably favorites. So. Mm hmm. So net worth wise, Troll maintaining a constant around a thousand gold lead over Arteezy. And now that Secret finally had Blink Daggers, maybe looking for some solo ultimate plays from the Magnus here and there. Alright, well. We'll see what Magnus can get to get done with this Blink Dagger of his, but an IP maybe have their eyes set on this Radiant Ancient stack, which they just scouted out using the troll. That's going to come in with a Firefly to make sure it's not going down, but I'd be well aware of it and seem to be somewhat grouping up themselves towards this top lane they go. Dio Sentry will block the, the camp from spawning any further Ancients here on the Radiant side, but... All they need to do is limit PA's farm, which is trade kills, like uh, maybe sacrifice Alina for a PA kill or block her Ancients, and an under farm PA will not be able to get carried in this game. Unless, of course, there are sick RPs, which NIP has fallen prey to before. Yep. Well, we'll see if uh, that's going to be the case here. They're going to continue to farm these Ancients, but this is the last Ancients they get for some time until they deward this. NIP seem to be having their eyes set on waiting out the Roshan respawn, though. They're getting up what vision they can. They're pushing out the lanes. They seem to be focusing more on the map control aspect and... Roshan will be coming up sometime in the next three minutes, and well, it's going to be a max Roshan respawn timer. That's that's not exactly the best news for NIP, although last time Roshan was kind of there on doing. Yeah. All top, Zai did. That's your Shadow Blade reveal. So Zai continuing, continuing his struggles. Oh, gets RP'd. Limp. Oh, Skewer back. back. And they get a counter kill. That's well worth it for Secret in the end. As much as they do want Zai's full stuff. That's a big kill to be getting. Yeah, they, they cannot afford to give uh, trade kills like that. They can't kill trade Lena's life for Batrider. It's all about the PA, limiting her kills, increasing her deaths, and controlling her farm. So, an IP has to be very careful about the Roshan pit engage again. Don't feed PA another Aegis. And then continue your map control, continue your exerting your presence with the Lina, get your Blink Dagger on your Earthshaker, and then they can go for even more picks. Lina on one side of the map, Earthshaker on the other, and Troll, meanwhile, farming. 
It's just scary. PA already has almost 2,000 gold on top of the BKB, which Arteezy hasn't even needed to use yet, so you've got to imagine a potential damage item could be coming up in no time at all if PA wants to go for one. What damage item does he go for? Abyssal? Well, Abyssal, and you could theoretically still go back for a Battle Fury, but with Empower it seems completely unnecessary. But MKB please. against the troll, maybe? I don't know. Nah, he, he's he got BKB. BKB. Yeah. yeah, I think he needs Basher or... I mean, if he if he gets Battle Fury now, though, is it worth it? So-so. I don't think it'd be bad by any means. I'm just not sure if, I, if there's if the Abyssal Blade you mentioned is probably better, I would say, but... I still think Battle Fury would be attack. fine as far as damage goes. It's great for damage. No I think he's going to have more issues with like bursting down a single target like a troll than he is like clearing, pushing out creep waves and. Oh, does Chen have eggs? Chen does have eggs. I see a golem. Arm. Probably is ridiculously farmed. Okay, well, Chen, number five on net worth, very healthy lead for Puppy the Chen farmer. I mean, yeah, it, it's just two different styles. You can't say like the aggressive level one roaming around with smokes is better than it. It just applies for different situations. And secret, they don't like to lose out on the late game, but they only have one big late gamer in Phantom Assassin. And she has finally overtaken the net worth chart. They're looking for a lasso. Get close to Jonas here. Now he's going to go oh, swoop back in. And there we go. Lasso comes out. Where's the follow up though? Puppy's there. There's a skewer as well. And PA with the blink in gets the kill. So, Seeker get a clean pick off and will also find this Dire Ancient stack. As Lena from the side. Oh, could have almost gone for a Laguna there, but doesn't have the Ag Scepter and Arteezy. Gonna heal himself up a bit, little bit with the Helm of the Dominator on the Ancients. Yeah, Dragon Slave Laguna from a not awkward position. Would have killed it right there. So. Maximum Roshan respawn, it is up. Golem is tanking. Can NIP take a fight in the pit? This time Secret will be the one starting it off, but it's already at half HP. Their entire team is just not in a good position. I don't think, I don't even know if NIP realized what was going on though. Kind of split pushing the bottom lane. I mean, they, ha they had to have realized. They had just gotten a pick. It had been 11 minutes and less Roshan respawn, and that's just textbook yeah. time to take Roshan. Oh, there's a Dire Ward there as well, but a DDPA, that just brought down, got brought down so fast, so. I mean, they've given away so much of their lead in the past few minutes. Yeah, well, speaking of the lead, it's going the Radiant Way. About 2,000 net worth for now, experience-wise, a little less. And you're at top, looking to scurry away from some secret rotation towards his top lane. But I think Secret may just say, well, we're just happy to go for the towers. We haven't had much in the way of towers. Only the T1 mid lane has been pushed out. How has NIP not secret? been able to take down that mid T1 tower? I actually think that's a pretty big deal. Yeah. If that isn't up, they might not be able to make the play on the Phoenix. But a very timely smoke. N not the most obvious timing, but obvious enough that NIP should be playing very carefully around that Roche respawn. They also haven't been checking the pit, I dare say. Hmm. So it's going to be Limp roaming around with the Shadow Blade now, looking for their next couple of kills. But for NIP, they've really got to just buckle down and not give away too many free pickoffs like they seem to be doing over the last few minutes. They're in the lead as far as kills go, but you've got an Aegis on your PA. And the damage item is going to be an SMY for Arteezy. So a bit of a hybrid item as far as damage, attack speed, HP goes, you've got the maim in there as well. Yeah, SNY is not bad. Especially since I think Lena is working on her scepter. At some point you're going to need the HP. If you go Battle Fury or Yasha or MKB or anything like that, you're just going to get Lena ulted in the face. So having this nice mix of... Oh, PA blinks in bottom lane. They threw the Laguna S4, but that's not going to do enough. Limp now, defensive Yules. Zai is looking for the lasso. Can he get it on Phoenix? Yes, he will. Pulls him back, they've already lost Lena, now it's going to be two! As Arteezy starts a killing spree. Uh-oh. Things getting worse and worse for NIP at this point in the game. NIP just stopped exerting pressure. Which, uh, like, remember last game, the Lena got a pick with her Shadow Blade, and then they proceeded into Roche. Where is that sort of play this game? Instead, she's the one pick getting picked, and Secrets are the one taking Roche. Mm -hmm. The secret of the ones completely control the map right now. Era just forced into some split push play at the top lane and doesn't feel like he can fight too well into this secret team right now. And secret gonna have four heroes towards this mid lane. Chen's actually making his way towards top. May, may look to just bring in his creep army and defend this tier two tower, but 
The rest of Secret, they're considering going high ground. Phoenix respawns, 10 seconds on Lena, and... We'll see this tier 3 tower getting tipped away. Ah, TZ considering a blink in. Decides against it, has an Aegis for some time still, and Hanskin with a blink dagger is going to be that big blink echo slam defender. If he can find the ulti that he needs. Man, Batrider, still no four staff. Where's your staff of wizardry? This bat is in, yeah, true poverty right now. What's his score right now? Zero and nine. Really? Whoa, okay, I did not realize that. He's more than half of the deaths. Yeah, I mean, he's just not played well, simply put. I, 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 there's nothing, yeah. nothing inaccurate about that. No need to make it fancy. Okay, we see a smoke coming out from NIP, but where is the objective? They're smoking into an area that they don't have vision. They're smoking against a PA who has ages up in her inventory. And it's just not that great of a time. Yeah. Actually, they did just place a ward down on bottom. No. They're going to lead the charge towards top lane on the secret side. They take out the tier 1 and they're going to make their move to the tier 2. It seems NIP have in mind some split push action. The troll though not down there who's their main pushing hero. So even if they get to this tier 2 tower unopposed, one of their actual damage output is vacant. And troll, speaking of which, he's been spotted up by a Radiant Observer Ward. S4 nearby has a blink RP soon. Oh! Hey yo! This is that RP. But they're giving up the T3. RP is down. <laughs> this this is n should not be happening as it is right now, it feels like. But still, just realizing that, that NIP is completely lasso. out of position. Yeah, you've got to really be aware of that. These, these granite golems, too, can't be dealt with. You get them low, Hand of God heals them back to full HP. They're just going to keep chipping away on these mid racks, it looks like. I think like. they need a bounce. I mean, they do have the Aegis, but they don't have RP. I wish I didn't have mana for a lasso from your bat rider. Oh, Hanskin has the Echo Slam with yep. the Blink Dagger. Level 2 now. This could be Secret's undoing. Well, I think they've seen it though. He had it the last push they went for, so... Maybe something Secret are yeah. ready for, but... Still, I mean, even if you see, see it, you can ask Navi. <laughs> <laughs> they knew all about Blink, Echo, and Arteezy. He's got the Aegis, so it's Kuro with him. No, he loses the Aegis. Oh, boy. That's a big kill. Now the Supernova going to force Secret even further back. The timing of this initiation works out perfectly. And S4 gets blinked on again by the Earthshaker, making all the plays happen. And really nicely done. That Terrible Aegis timing for a push. Yeah, had expired. It had even expired like 20 seconds ago. It wasn't even like it just expired as he died. Even if it, even if they had it, like, and it, there were like three minutes left, you should just wait for an RP. I, I think it's just far too risky. The only reason they took the T3 was because NIP was completely out of position, pushing down the bottom T2. And then with a with RP on top, it's like, okay, well, we have no team fight because our bat rider still doesn't have four staff. So if he lasts with someone, he might not even make it down the cliff just because he might get used immediately or fissured or, you know, any other thing that can hit him. So, yeah, I would say that Secret overstayed their welcome, missed the RP, which is also a big deal, and missed time their ages. If they didn't have the ages, they certainly shouldn't have pushed. Hmm. Speaking of pushes, NIP going to play make probably the smart move and just back off, decide not to go for this push down mid. They need to bait out the smoke gank. I think they need to be sitting on a high ground or be sitting out with a support and then go in with a blink echo once they come in with a with a smoke. I think that Secret are going to try and secure the next rush because that one's a big deal. When you have big ultimates like Lasso and RP, you counter it by having Aegis. So it's just that much more important for NIP to secure it. Unless they want to deal with it with buybacks, which is a much riskier way to deal with them. Or not get caught out, but you know, you can't avoid getting single RP'd. Yep. Yeah, if you're using buybacks, it's not really a good long-term strategy if you're going to be getting new items up on your side of NIP. Not Chen, to mention is, Chen is ridiculously farmed, though. He's more farmed than Magnus now. Oh my god. He's the second most farmed secret hero, the fourth most farmed hero in the game. He has twice as much farm as Batrider. Ideally, those would be swapped, yes. where Chen would have, like, Scepter and Boots, and Batrider would have Blink, BKB, Force Staff. Well, I guess we'll see what the Chen can do. The Yule Scepter. 
exactly the craziest of items. It does offer some additional lockdown and control for your troll. Oh, Lena gonna get one kill now. The cannon kill Artis with a BKB brings him down at bottom and PA goes through that nine second BKB. Chaz has now picked up a basher. This ultimate just means there's another tool of initiation because if they can jump the patrol warlord, he doesn't have BKB. So they can blink on, blink strike on him, abyssal him, and then if he doesn't die, they can RP and or uh, and or uh, lasso him and then kill him. And without him, the PA is pretty much immune during the BKB. I mean, unless Lena drops the uh, PA, but she's not going to die during the BKB. Yeah, and also, Troll does not yet have an MKB. Okay, and still some ways to go for it, I guess. He's got just the SMY Scotty with the Helm of the Dominator. There's going to be a lasso grab at top lane. That's on Jonas. He gets pulled in and brought down. Arteezy with the DD rune going to make himself known. Mimo to the side. It's going to be a Troll looking to fight down onto Kuro. Kuro brought down by Troll, but Arteezy, double damage. Can you fight this PA? I don't think so. The Echo Slam comes in. Arteezy is going to be the main focus. Nice Yules, though, going to lock the Troll in place. Hanskin goes down, 1700 crit, Arteezy! Oh boy, making it look too easy as Era next in line could be going down as well. The Supernova, they need a stun from this, but it looks like they're going to try to focus down the egg, not in time. Arteezy stunned up through the BKB, blinks forward, gets hit by Laguna, but they kill the troll anyways. Dive with Fire Spirits, causing problems for Arteezy, but he's going to solve them with a blink forward, Jonas. No dive to escape this one, and Chen gets that kill. Four down on the NIP side. Blink into the high ground with an RP. Limp next in line for Arteezy again. Mega kill streak as he gets a double kill, and they're going to focus their efforts on this mid racks as both range and melee going down. That Yules was pretty clutch by Puppy. It was when it, it was their window that they needed to burst down that PA. Her BGB had just expired, there was a big echo coming in, Troll was right next to him, and that is what happens when you don't get a BKB on Troll. You just get kited, and that was just so important. He doesn't have an MKB, so his uptime is very minimal on the PA. Oh, Arteezy getting chained on the full staff, comes maybe a bit too late, and he's gonna be brought down. He was trying to get the blink to the low ground, but the Earthshaker fissure into a blink totem was really nicely done. And Hanskin. Roshan is right about to respawn in about 30 seconds time. Undoubtedly, NIP will head into the pit. The question is, are they going to get the Aegis? They're going to go in there. They're not going to see that it's up. Are they going to camp there? Or are they going to keep a chicken there? They're going to have an HOD creep? Well, they may get there at the right time, especially if Aerith is going to find the Ancients along the way. Yeah, why are they not doing Roche? I think they should just do a Roche immediately. What? Especially since Troll doesn't have buyback. That is priority number one. So he's going to walk in. No. Max Roche respawn is about oh 20 seconds goodness. from now. <laughs> Just well, one second too early. If they wrote the Roche timer down, they know it's coming in the next 20 seconds. Hanskins goes back in. There's your due diligence from your uh, Shaker. This guy has been maybe the MVP to keep NIP in this game with some of his recent plays. But 25 seconds on PA. Are going to get to work? And here come... Imagine if they had started it like as soon as they had respawned, though. I mean, I think Era should have just been sitting in the pit. If they knew that it's like 2 minutes and 45 seconds, then oh. they could do it without the risk of Zai being able to steal it. And Zai now nearby, ready to go. Is he making a play on this one? The Flame Break comes into play, gets hit by a Fissure, though. Nicely played from Yoroshik again, and Zai going to get blown up by the Laguna Blade. Oh boy, Man, an under double digit deaths. Underfarm Batrider, he needs BKB to make those sort of plays, too. Everyone needs BKBs. Yep. And this is the blink four stuff for now, and it's not cutting it. NIP still holding on for now with this game. It's about an 8,000 gold deficit. And unfortunately, they lost their mid racks, but you have a troll with an Aegis and these kind of items. It is potential there for that turnaround. I do see one of NIP's weaknesses, though, is being able to control the mid game with an early game lead. Like the. The best teams, you give them like a 2,000 gold lead, they'll eventually increment it up to 3,000 after a few minutes and then 4,000, 5,000 and never let it go. But NIP, they had a pretty sizable early mid advantage and then they just didn't take out Roshan, they didn't take out the towers, and they even let Secret take a free T3 in the mid lane. Mm, that's easy. Once out, not going to get hit by the LSA. Yeah, he has enough HP though to tank it. Yep. Maybe Lena should get the MKP. Possibly. Uh, you you go in with your combo and hit the LSA Laguna Blade. PA lives on maybe five, six hundred. That's why you with a battle trance, Lena.
could quickly finish off the rest of the PA's HP. Yeah, I mean, alternatively, she could get a Ghost Scepter and kite during the BKB of the PA, which is not that bad of an mm. option. I would say either one of those. Could also go just for like the the hex as another possibility. Oh yeah, hex is really good. Now can also get rid of the evasion. I mean, see could. I mean, they do have the potential to make cheeky plays later, like send in the PA with a test of faith, and then just have her blow somebody up, hope for a crit, and then uh, have some high ground shenanigans. Other than having to deal with RP, so it's it is all in on Arteezy, uh, but at the same time, he has been making it work. Yeah, for now, ten five and four with a Bissell blade complete. Arteezy is sitting pretty. Imagine next up is probably just completing the Satanic, give him some more HP survivability. Even has the Ice Armor creep for himself as well to allow him to fight that Troll Warlord just that little bit better. So the Troll Warlord is in somewhat of a predicament. Does he want to farm his MKB? No. Oh, limp. He walked into this one, pulled to oh the high my. ground. Doesn't get a chance to use the cheese as well. That's a, that's a rookie mistake, I must say. Yep. Yeah, they were ready for him, and now Batrider being pushed forward. He's got another blink as well. He's just charging forward. Look at them. We'll cancel the Hanskin TP. And that's easy. We'll blink forward and probably finish him off here. One more stifling dagger will be enough. And like you said, a bit of a rookie mistake, perhaps. Yeah, that's just something an ex a very experienced player won't make. Uh, like, you, you have to expect that your opponents will get a gem at some point, especially if you've been making somewhat of an impact. He has 12 kills on his Lena, and they are certainly going to get a gem at some point uh, to counter his deep, deep movements. And now, immediately swing up to the T3. And again, secret, they have a disadvantage. They have the disadvantage in the fact that NIP has the Aegis. And last time, it was disadvantage of the fact that they don't have RP up, which are both pretty sizable disadvantages. And still, they force a big cooldown from NIP, Lena's buyback. Last time, they got a T3 out of it. And they're just so good at taking a foot when they're given an inch. And even just the money that Lena suspends will slow down any further item progression we're seeing come out from Limp. Yeah, he, he needed a Hex, MKB, or Ghost. Like, one of those three. Probably, or, or BKB even, would be decent. So, Smoke coming out from NIP. Trying to make use of this age. It's about, what, 1 minute and 10 seconds left on that. Just enough time after the Smoke ends. And it looks like Secret. They are pretty wary they are very scared they know that okay all we need to do is wait out the ages and then we can blow troll up with an rp his buyback is still down for a minute and a half but he doesn't even have enough money to complete his mkb nor buy it back after a death yeah, just runs into the Chenker Torn, right into Arteezy on the front lines. Abyssal Blade, BKB, popped error. He's got to be brought down before the fight even begins. It may just be an Aegis. S4's got an RP waiting for him, though, and they'll use it on the troll. It's a solo RP, but it's well worth it if they get the kill. But Hanskin shows up, blink, Echo Slam, Fisher. Is this going to be enough? It may, that may be, but it doesn't look like it. Arteezy blinks out the supernova, perfectly placed. We'll salvage the fight for now, secret. They've lost two, we'll buy back the bat, nice blink to the low ground, Arteezy jukes himself out of there, and will be sent back to base by Puppy, whose TP gets cancelled. The Oshinka Fissure. Oh, can he find a little nook and cranny to hide this one in? Doesn't look like it. Gem gets dropped, and Arteezy will TP himself back in. That Earthshaker once again saving up to save the day. Meanwhile, Zai, uh-oh, in a bit of a deep spot here, but it's S4 rocking up to turn things around, brings down the Earthshaker. Meanwhile, the Skyrath goes down an error. He's trapped. He's going to get kited around by the Batrider air, and then Arteezy's going to show up with a new Abyssal Blade soon if he needs it. Man, that Blink Strike into the Test of Faith. Plays coming out from Secret and just outplaying NIP. They had, again, a great time to burst down the PA. They had Battle Trance up, B PA, BKB down, and then locked in the Echo. And then again, a Yules to save the day. Secret will get another kill on Jonas at the T4s. And now, I mean, it is. Troll is in the grave for 57 seconds. I'm not exactly sure why he bought out his javelins when he could have had his buyback available at this point. But yeah, they are crumbling. They are falling apart. And that was that was a sick jump. They they knew that the smoke was coming. Oh, it's another pick up. Arteezy gonna find Jonas once more. He just bought back and Lim gonna get skewered back into the BKB PA. Defensive Yules is there, but he blinks forward on your Skyrath instead. Lim gets off a Laguna Blade, but it looks like he's going down anyways. Magic Missile will find him and Secret put four NIP heroes onto the bench. 
With Amazing that. teamwork from Secret, I must say. Yeah. Like, Zai didn't play the best, but I think everyone else more than pulled their own weight. Looking like this may be the game winning blow as GG is called and Secret are through to the best of three finals here at Red Bull Battlegrounds Europe. Group play. They've taken down Alliance. Now they take down the Ninjas in pajamas, and all they've got to do is wait to see who will emerge from that lower bracket to challenge them in the finals. 19 kills on Arteezy. It was impressive stuff from Ve him. Very impressive. I'm, I'm still pretty wild that NIP 